a very useful thing. The way it's hanging around unprotected, it's probably just a replica. I'll take it just in case. What now? For crying out loud. Oh, I was just looking at this beautiful... thing when the alarm went off. All right already. Don't leave until I've done a round of the entire floor. Okay, I'll just guard the entry then. Shit, this is the poster. So Akero was coming here. If Akero used to come here, then drugs were here too. They arrived here inside the exhibits and were repacked here too. It doesn't seem likely that Warren knew nothing about it. And the porter? That's why Nick took an interest in him. Guess this is a packing table. It looks like James was also interested in this cabinet. There was white pollen on them. A very useful thing. It's a message from Nick. How the hell? Our knife man's dead. I'll have to look into this ASAP. The 181st Street subway station. It was to hear that the bum invited me. Could he murder? Nah, he's more the victim type. Low rent neighborhood. A very useful thing. A wire attached to an elegant handle. I'll take it just in case. This was once a modern station. Hi Jeff, what have we got here? Same as last time. Am I Mr. Lucky or what? Got it? Yep, wasn't such a surprise though. First time I saw a mess like that, I lost my lunch. Now I see it and think, what's for lunch? <laughs> nice. Real nice. So, who found the body? There were some guys in renovating the place. One of them. 
He know the Vic? Don't think so. Okay, let's take a look here. Okay, that'll be fine. How's it going, Jeff? No news is good news, Agent. Irreplaceable equipment. Workman's tools left behind. How handy. Irreplaceable equipment. Someone used this newspaper to wipe the floor, maybe to obscure their footprints. Ventilation duct nearby. I can feel air movement. The screws are being blocked. Bottles crawling with beasties. Lighter's thirsty. Now it should light up. This looks like the proverbial message in a bottle. Unbelievable! Joel Tatum's Diploma of Fine Art from New York University. I should have examined this sample from the museum. Looks like the museum was spreading more than just knowledge. I want to search the entire museum. The chief could help with the search warrant. Hey Ruth. Chief around? Nope. And before you ask, I have no idea when he'll be back. Ah. Uh, hey, you've known him longer than I have. You think he's happy with my work? I'm sure he is, honey. Just don't count on him to actually say it. Huh. So how long have you known him? Oh, only a few months. He was in the Chicago office before. You know his family or anything? No. He lost his wife not long before I started here. He's only just gotten over it, really. Organizing this office helped him a lot. But from what I gather, he's 
not the same man. I'm wondering what the link is between all the victims. Tatum's death doesn't follow the pattern. They were all wealthy, respectable, educated men. And Tatum? He was a bum. We'll check the precinct's files on vagrancy busts and drifters. You never know. Well, I'll be. Tatum had a diploma from New York University. Maybe it was fake. Like one of those online ones. I don't think it was. He kept it rolled up in an old champagne bottle. Aha, uh -huh. so there's the connection then. They were all alcoholics? No, the education. Whatever happened to him, Tatum was at least a well-educated man. Right. And you know what else? All these guys were graduates of the same university. Were they more or less the same age? Maybe they studied together. Ruth, genius. Maybe there's something to this. I'm going down to the NYU library on East 84th to check it out. Respectable walls in a respectable library. So what's the librarian using if she doesn't have her glasses? Good morning, ma'am. Or rather, good evening. Do you have a library card or university ID? How's this? Oh, I say. And what brings the FBI to us today? Well, I'm trying to find out about some former students from, say, 1982 to 1986. I thought perhaps there'd be some papers or records. And all that today? I think you'd be here all week looking that lot up. Okay, so let's start with something that would list students' names for that period. Yearbooks, then. Hmm. Do you know what? Yeah? I'll have to close the reading room in a few minutes. I'm all alone here, you know. I understand that, ma'am, but I'm conducting an investigation here. I was expecting a butt, young lady. Don't worry, I'll stay and help you. Yes? Yes, indeed. Now, what was I saying? Oh, yes, I'm all by my lonesome here. Uh, yes, I noticed. I've been working in this library for 30 years, you know. I retired five years ago. Oh, so you came back because you couldn't live without the books, right? And do you know who my replacement is? My niece! She's at the Librarian's Conference in Europe. You raised your own successor. Well done. Anyway, to get back to the yearbooks. Yes, indeed. Now then, the university authorities are very fond of statistics, you know. Ah, paperwork? Right. Now then, if you bring me the books you want, I can catalog them and make the necessary statistical records. Uh, maybe you could point me in the right direction. Over there, on the shelves, left of the doors. They're the yearbooks. I hope Jessica Fletcher there will help me. Bundle of NYU bulletins bound together by a bookbinder. Here they are. What is it exactly you're hoping to find in them? Anything I can about four or five of your old students. I see. And what are their names? Well, Joel Tatum, Andrew Haig, Henry Fairbanks, John Rudolph, and Mark Chestum. Oh, 
Hold your horses there, sweetie. Hmm. Okay, let's start with Tatum. Here's the index. And here he is, page 226. Now then, where are those other boys? Hmm. Seems all their entries refer to page 226. Let's have a look there. Thank you very much, ma'am. Oh, don't thank me too soon. This page has been torn out. Look, see? Oh my God, is this Scooby-Doo or what? Those meddling kids get worse with every generation. But I'll catch the little buggers. Oh, yes. Uh, are there any copies, microfilms and so on? Microfilms? Why, yes. Although the newer things are being scanned now, you know. Uh-huh. Do you think I could have a look at the microfilm for this page? Not today, sweetie. I'm too tired now. Come back tomorrow. My niece will be back then. She's much better with the technical things. Listen, ma'am. Someone else may die today, and it's possible that that microfilm contains something I can use to stop anyone else from being hurt. Yes. Well, when you put it like that... Shocking. Quite shocking. Well, I should leave now if I'm going to catch my bus. But there's one later on, too. I could always take that one instead. All right then, sweetie. I'll help you. Okay, FBI. You convinced me. Terrific. Thank you so much. Now, where are the microfilms? I'll try to find them the old-fashioned way. You'd be better off playing the lottery. Higher chances. Needle in a haystack, huh? <laughs> the microfilm room is there on the right. Wait, from here I can unlock all the drawers. Ah, oh, screw it. There's more celluloid here than in George Lucas's garage. You're right. I won't find anything this way. Never mind. In the meantime, I found the catalog number. It's 01-044-86. One o four four eight six. The numbers here are totally different. Where'd she get this from? I'm sorry, there seems to be a problem. The microfilms in there have a totally different format. Well, I did tell you to come back tomorrow and talk to my niece. May I call her? She's probably halfway over the Atlantic right now. I doubt she'd have her mobile switched on. Well, do you know why the numbers are different? Well, it all changed in recent years, but it's hard to implement new systems like that. A few items always get left out, and I don't know how to convert the old catalog numbers. Okay, perhaps we can work it out together. What did the numbers in the old system represent? Well, that's easy. The first two digits were the catalog section, the next three were the number of a specific item, and the last two were the year. I see. Now, new catalog numbers contain additional information, and the two-digit year numbers are now the full four. So the new catalog numbers would be like... 01044-1986? Well, the item number is now a four-digit code. So in our case, it'd probably be 0044. And the 01 would be 001 for sure. Whew. Guess I knew more than I thought I did. Guess so. Okay, let me look real quick for that microfilm now.
It's been hiding in this drawer for far too long. Let's see what secrets it holds. Such an archaic filing system. Almost a whole game in itself. Guess what? I found the microfilm. Oh, you did? Wonderful. You can pop it in the reader over on the other side of the reading room. The reel may yet come in handy. I managed to wind the film onto the reel. The image is terrible. Ah, no lens. The image is terrible. Is that the only machine? At the moment, yes. The others are being repaired. Is there something wrong with that one? The optics are broken, no focal lens. Oh, well, I really don't know how to help you there. Uh, wait a minute. Isn't that the lens from the microfilm reader? I have no idea what it is, sweetie. But I find it useful sometimes. I found it on the floor, you know. Well, this is the lens from the microfilm reader. If you don't mind, I can fix it. Oh, I don't know about that. How would I read the very small print? Don't you have glasses? Of course. Well, why don't you just use them? I'm sure the students need the microfilm reader, too. Hmm. But I don't know where my glasses are right now. What? You lost them? No, no. They're around here somewhere. I only need them for reading, you know. Now, where did I put them? Oh, never mind. I was using a clever little piece of glass before. Where did I put that? I haven't been to an ophthalmologist for a while. Well, that was stupid. Here you go, ma'am. I found your glasses. Oh, how wonderful. What a clever detective you are. Thank you so much. Look, I know you're in a hurry to get home, but could I ask you for just a moment longer? Oh, no hurry, dear. I feel safer here with you anyway. Thank you. I'll be finished real soon now. Could I have another look at that lens? Yes, of course. Here it is. Finally, now the text is clear. NYU students to follow in the footprints of conquistadors. Amazon expedition underway. NYU professor of archaeology Dr. Samuel Dickinson is leading an expedition into the Amazon rainforest. Their itinerary recreates the journeys of the Spanish explorers of the 16th and 17th centuries. While the party's goal is the last of the great Incan treasures, the fabled horde of Tupac Amaru. Can the professor achieve what the conquistadors did not? Will he find the legendary city of Akakor, treasure vault of an entire empire, the once mighty Incas? The team who has already left for Peru consists mostly of NYU students. 
List of participants in Professor Dickinson's expedition. Samuel Dickinson, Professor of Pre-Columbian Archaeology at NYU, Expedition Leader. Alice Dickinson, the professor's daughter, student. William Warren, assistant to the professor. Andrew Haig, student, team doctor. Henry Fairbanks, student, technician. Mark Chestum, student. Joel Tatum, student. John Rudolph, student. Alan Branford, student. Noel Roche, student. So all the victims were part of the expedition. Fairbanks, Haig, Chestum, Rudolph, and Tatum. Finally. We got ourselves a fact. There's something here about the aftermath, too. Tragedy in the jungle. Our university community has lost an outstanding colleague and teacher, Professor of Archaeology, Dr. Samuel Dickinson. His scientific and social achievements are writ large across the history of our university. He was last seen heading a scientific expedition to Peru to find the legendary Incan treasure vaults left behind after the conquistadors' invasion. In the course of the expedition, the professor, his daughter Alice, and fellow student Noel Roche all went missing. Roche's body was found later in the jungle. He had been killed by native Indians. Despite valiant attempts by the other members of the expedition, led by Professor Dickinson's assistant William Warren, Dickinson and his daughter were never found. In the face of the Indian threat and increasingly difficult weather conditions, the remaining party members chose to withdraw. According to Mr. Warren, the chances of finding the professor alive are virtually nil. We believe, though, that the professor and his students will live on in our university's history. Peace in their memory. Warren, Warren, he's the linchpin of this whole story. It's just him and Branford now. Now, are they both potential victims, or is one of them the murderer? Maybe they're in it together. Or maybe the murderer is someone not on the list. And where's the irrefutable proof that Hakiero killed Fairbanks? Are there two murderers at work here? Anyway, let's copy the list of participants. Maybe I can get out of here finally. Let's see this list again must be a link between the expedition 20 years ago and the crimes now. Only thing this list connects is the victims with each other. Can we really explain the murders as a result of the events of the past? Why didn't Branford or Warren say anything about knowing the victims? That's fishy. What's stopping them from revealing information that could save their lives? Only if one or both of them were directly involved in the killings would it make sense to do so. We'll have to check their alibis again. Anyway, all the clues lead to Warren at the moment. Drugs, Hakiero, expeditions in the jungle. We must start from the expedition. That's where the fuse was lit. The drugs thing is probably incidental. Don't want to get too hung up on that. Thank you very much, ma'am. I've got everything I need now. May I go home then? Certainly, but if you'll just bear with me a second. <phone rings> Federal Agent Nicole Bonnet, FBI. I need a patrol car to the library on East 84th. It's for an expert witness in a case I'm investigating. I'll need her driven home safely. Thank you. Okay, ma'am. A policeman will be along in five minutes to give you a ride home. Thank you very much for your time. You've been a tremendous help. Not at all. It was quite exciting, actually. <laughs>